Hi there, this is a review about the Canna Dream Super Camper. My name is Michael, uh, working for Canadream. Canadream has been in business for 30 years. Um, I've been part of Canadream for the last eight years. Um, we're gonna look at a few motorhomes today, some of which are considered maxi motorhomes. Those are the C-classes that some of you might be familiar with. And then we have some deluxe van campers which would fall under the category B-class motorhomes. They're very small, but ideal for couples, whereas C-class motorhomes are ideal for larger families, up to six people. Right now, in our fleet, we, uh, we're in Toronto, we keep 180 motorhomes, uh, but nationwide we have 1,600, and uh, we welcome guests from all over the world. This season, of course, we have the challenge of COVID, but we uh, try our best to sanitize social distance and still invite our local guests, our domestic Canadian guests, to experience their country uh, in their, on their own pace. Hi guys, uh, so we are just checking out at Canada Dream another camper just so you have an idea of a bigger one. So this one sleeps six. It is called the Max C. It actually sleeps technically three kids, four adults, but they say it's recommended only for six. As you could see, there was two adults fit at the top and then two adults in the back. In this uh, dinette, it switches down to a bed just as in the SVC uh, Super Camper. But this one, it has awesome reclining chairs. Uh, it has TV up there that swivels out. And then actually this whole entire wall here from front to back, it moves out about a foot and a half, two feet. So you would have a lot of space here in the middle for walking, so yeah. This camper is roughly the same price as the smaller ones. So actually the smaller ones, technically the price uh, to buy one at least is actually more expensive than the bigger ones surprisingly so Canada Dream they rent RVs and if you like it that much you can actually buy them as well they have an office here you can buy the RVs they're usually roughly around 80 grand Canadian I think it's a great price and it would be a great investment
part for little concept, right? And then all you have to do, there's two wooden parts that are, I guess, in the back right now, but they connect and sit on these ledges, right? And then once you have the wood, like the planks in between, you take that cushion and you take that cushion and you squeeze it in the middle. Oh, okay. So once you have that set up, it all becomes part of your bed. Wow, it's crazy how small it is. <laughs> There. This is a review about the Canna Dream Super Camper. It is one of the smaller RVs. There are smaller, there are larger ones. We chose this one because we have two kids, two dogs, and well, two adults. So we're actually comfortably fit in here. I'm going to show you first how to make this thing more spacious. There are two slide outs. The way it works is that you have to have the handbrake on, which is actually right here, which you engage by kicking your foot down on the pedal. Then the car needs to be, or the RV needs to be started. So we will turn it on, and that actually allows us to slide out the slide ups. As you can see, we have it right now set up to the bench with uh, the table. Whenever we had lunch, breakfast, sometimes also with dinner, we would have the table like this. I will show you here how to slide out the, the dinette. Make sure you have the engine running. This is the panel for the slide out and all your electronics. I will go over those later. This is the slide out button. So slide in, slide out. Right now it is in, so we're gonna push out. The slide out for the master bedroom, if you want to call it master bedroom, is right here. So it's just a simple switch here. Also press out. can see the bed is cut in half but it's actually angled so you can push it down flatten out the sheets and we actually did not feel this at all the edge in the middle and we were surprised we actually slept really good this bed is very comfortable and we had no problems to separate this at night we actually did use the curtain here so this is the curtain that just splits one room or as we have the kids here we actually had our five-year-old sleeping here I'll show you this in a minute how to convert this and then we actually brought our really just a playpen for our uh, one-year-old daughter so she slept here and we have the dog bed here on the floor behind the driver's seat and we have a we have a big German Shepherd and a small dog and they just slept here. And we, we were able to squeeze through here when, whenever we had a campfire outside. We would be able to squeeze through, come on through, and then uh, our son, whenever he had to pee at night, happens. He was still able to squeeze through here as well and use the washroom. As um, 
a button here for a night light. So it actually puts a little light in the washroom and there's a little light by the steps where you come in at night and you had a few drinks or it's just dark outside. The kids are sleeping, we need to escape outside. Okay, it's all good. The night light is for, for the kids being able to use the washroom at night. So this is the air conditioning and furnace heating um, thermostat. The on and off button is just the purple button right here. All the RVs have quite similar thermostats. So the air conditioner units right here, depending how you want the air, you can have more air here. If you close this, it actually has central air vents here. So there's four on this side. There are two here, one in the bathroom and one in the back bathroom as well. So it's actually quite good like we've had no problems with the air conditioner we were plugged in to several campsites with electric right now we are plugged into our home because we made it back home after four weeks of renting this rv we actually had no problems whatsoever the rv was very well maintained we had no issues no flat tires no wind chip windshield window chips the only issue that we did have was the dvd player right here it would sometimes play a movie sometimes not that is the only negative thing that i would have to say or well there are two things i guess i would have to say that are negative the dvd player sometimes mid movie it would stop working the other thing because there is a skylight which is great at the same time it's very bright here as our son was sleeping below here so we did have a piece of cardboard that we brought with us and we just used some uh, tape that wouldn't damage anything and we just taped it up. I don't know if there is supposed to be a curtain that does not look like it. There is for at night. You can close this up. There is a curtain that is supplied that you can actually just velcro on there. It has velcro edges so you can just stick it on there however you like and seal this off for privacy at night. Plus it keeps the, the dark the dark in the light out uh, we have little kids and they wake up from the tiniest bit of light in the morning so we had cardboard up at the top and we had cardboard at the bottom however our dogs would go on the chairs in the morning and bark at other people walking by or animals so we did block it off by putting cardboard there. We did also cover up this window. We actually have a poster from My Big Trips. Uh, that is our YouTube channel. We just posted or put it on the window so other people could follow us. Whenever our door was open, they would see our YouTube channel name. If you're not subscribed, please do. It really helps us out and click like on the video. It really helps us a lot. To continue, all the windows are, they have blackout curtains, so they're very good. Like. Just pull them and then go back up. There are some easy night lights. You just press, or I guess if you're having a meal, you can just turn those on. But there are, there are light switches here too. The living room lights, kitchen lights. Um, this is an Arctic button. That is if you're renting this RV and it is winter time, you need to turn on the Arctic button so that your Gray water and black water don't freeze at night or well, during the day anywhere. This is your water pump without having this on. The water will not come out of the tap. The reason the water is splashing right now is we are basically out of water and the pump was off, but I'm pretty sure we're out of water. This is the gas heater for the water. You also have electric water. So if you choose to use gas, I'm just gonna feel it here right now. Yeah, you hear it underneath it's it's heating up the water tank right away gas is much quicker to heat up your water but at the end we left it off because we didn't want to have to refill it and we were driving a lot so if you're driving a lot or connected to an electric like an outlet at a campsite or if you want to run your generator all the time you can use just the electric to heat your water and it will do a good job we had for the last three days of our trip we had just been using the electric water and if there was two people taking a shower one at a time of course because that shower is tiny it still gave you enough water or hot water when you are connected to a 20 or 30 amp uh, outlet or are running the generator which actually if i can show you the start stop button is right here if i press it you'll start hearing it so, so the 
generator is quite loud. We did have it on a few nights when we were just um, sleeping in a parking lot at Walmart or Home Hardware. So right now I will turn it off. It is quite noisy. We don't want to be bothering the neighbors at this point. So one thing we did have a problem with was we were running the air when we had the generator running and we turned on the microwave. If you're using both at the same time, the air conditioning and the microwave, you will break the breaker. We checked actually the panel here. So none of the fuses were popped. And I actually did have to make a phone call to a friend. Well, if you've seen our Winnipeg video, you know who he is. If not, go check it out later. He told me there might be a plug or a fuse on the generator. So I walked outside, take, took a look at the generator and I found a fuse. That, or a breaker that had been popped. So I just flipped it back and everything worked again. I was quite happy because at first I was somewhat freaking out because it was late, it was getting dark, it was very hot. The RV in the summer does get very hot. So lighting the stove, the stove inside and the top, I will show you right now. So we were actually surprised the um, RV didn't come with a barbecue lighter and the starter for the stove didn't seem to work or at least we can't we still haven't figured out if this is how it I don't see any spark nothing is clicking so we got the barbecue lighter anyway and we just turn the knob on and have it lit when you're cooking or lighting this up I always recommend turn the hood fan on first because the alarm of the gas will go off if you don't turn this on or have some kind of good ventilation. So I actually recommend lighting the lighter first before turning this on. All right, so now I will show you how to light up the oven. This actually took us a while to figure out, so it's good that you get a quick look at how we light it up. Um, there is supposed to be a light, the light doesn't seem to work on here, but it's not a big deal. I did use a flashlight for my phone the first couple times to figure out where I had to light it up. So let me see, it is it is kind of awkward to light it. So I will show you here. This is the button for the oven. There is a little flame right there. That is for the pilot light. So right there is a little flame for a pilot light. So you push it in, leave it on the pilot light and then hold it there. And then you need the lighter and hold it under the spot where the pilot light goes. So I had to hold the lighter right there while pushing the button and it does not light right away. You have to keep holding it and you have to keep the lighter lit for at least five seconds, maybe even a few seconds longer. And then you can remove the lighter and it will stay lit. I'm still holding the button in, but I can release it now. I can actually release it now and it will stay on. I released the button, but now I push it in again. And actually I don't have to push it in. So now that it's on, I can just move it to the temperature that I want. So what I do recommend is that when you uh, are checking your food to see if it's fully cooked, even if it says you put your food in 30 minutes, you take it out and you shut the whole oven off, including the pilot light, then, and your food is not fully cooked, it's super hot here, so then having to stick your hand back in the oven is not a good idea, so make sure you leave the pilot light on until you're 100% sure your food is heated up, because we did have to do that once and we have to cover things with towels so that we wouldn't burn our hands, so that's a good tip. The pilot light's still on, but I'm going to turn it off now. So it's off, I'll double check and you're all set. To operate your freezer and fridge is quite easy. When you get your RV, it's most likely already on on. This is the on off button. So there is automatic. You can have gas on, gas off. So actually your fridge and freezer work on gas unless you are plugged into an electric source. It is an automatic. So when you're driving, it either uses gas well, it will use gas when you're plugged in to RV site. It will automatically switch over to electric. If you see two lights on, it will say check. So let me turn it on for a second and I'll say check. When you are at a gas station, 
you're told you should turn off your electric power, which is actually right here. It is right by the steps, by the door where you exit. You would just turn it off when you go and get gas to fill up the tank. And it's very easy to turn back on. There is also a switch here. So this is the awning button. It is deactivated because it is one of the first things to break. We did use the lights. These are the outside lights, LEDs and the spotlight by the door. Uh, it's very nice, but they do attract bugs, obviously. Oh, well, the awning is deactivated because they say it is one of the easiest things to break when renting out an RV. It can easily get stuck on a tree or you can forget about it and it gets windy or stormy weather and it can break. So they don't allow you to use it. We did use the lights. There are three light switches. One is just for up here. The other two are for outside. There's one with LEDs. So the LED button is just right here. That is the one we did use uh, a couple times. It was very nice when it was dark at a campsite. Uh, the other one is this one. This light here is the one that's close to the door. It just attracted one night so many mosquitoes. When I just let the dogs outside, we had six mosquitoes come inside in a matter of just opening and closing the door within a second. So that's the one I don't want to use. There is a fire alarm right here. If there's smoke, if you're making bacon, this thing is going to go off for sure. So we only did it once. Then there is another alarm. This alarm is carbon monoxide. So if you have the gas running, this will go off, which means you have to open all doors quickly, exit the vehicle and just let it air out. And also, of course, make sure your gas is off. The vehicle is equipped with a solar panel and batteries. The battery information thing, I don't know what it is. It's here. We don't, we didn't touch it. We didn't do anything with it, but this is the device. This is the toilet room or whatever you want to call it. It's not fully a bathroom because the shower and your closets are over there and your sink. So the toilet is right here. We actually, I don't know if you saw our video between Thunder Bay and in Calgary. Bathroom, very tiny. It's like one of those airport airplane ones, I mean, but there's not even a sink. So it's basically smaller than your airplane toilet. I recommend buying the toilet paper from the Canna Dream. I know it sucks they charge you for everything, but it's gonna save you money in the end by not having to buy a snake, because the snake cost me $30. If I just bought the toilet paper, it would have cost me maybe $15 or $20 for the whole month. So it would have been cheaper and would have saved me the problems. We ended up having to unclog it like three times because it would just happen again and again. So we actually chose very nasty, I know unfortunately not to put the toilet paper down there anymore we just had a garbage bag on the side and we would throw it out daily um, just put the toilet paper in the garbage you've already seen me unclog it you see me unload the tanks when you unload it or after you unload the tanks you have to drop these tablets that you also have to buy at the can of dream i think they're two dollars per tablet you drop them in the tank or through the toilet every time after you have emptied the tanks. It just kind of neutralizes the odor. A few times we skipped doing that and we had some vents running here in the ceiling. They actually draw air from the, from the RV. They draw the air outside, but actually somehow it will pull air out of the toilet. So you will start smelling the toilet smell. So make sure if you have the roof vents open and on to leave a window open to draw air otherwise it will draw it out of the toilet while you're unloading the black water it's highly recommended to put a bucket of water down in the toilet to wash everything out to make sure all the smelly stuff is gone and out so usually my wife would fill up the bucket of water while i'm outside uh, emptying the first tank the black tank and wash the water out and then open up the gray tank right after to wash out the hose. They do provide the bucket. Storage for our vacuum cleaner. We brought a very small thin vacuum cleaner that we hung up here or we kind of have to secure it here. We put our dog food here. We put um, toilet paper here and wet dog towels um, after or wet dog towels. After they went swimming, they had to hang dry somewhere. So we would hang them up here. 
Uh, we had enough storage here for all of us to put our clothes away. Look. Right up here we had all our toiletries and shampoos because they will fall if you leave them on the shelves in the shower when you're driving. So when you're driving it is important you secure all the doors. They are just with a little elastics uh, secured because if you leave a door loose it might go flying. So it is recommended to secure them. They come with little elastic thingies. So you yeah, just it's kinda irritating sometimes. Especially this one, it had this piece snapped off I guess already before we got it. So it's kind of tricky to open or close this one, but it's not that bad. Secure everything. Even behind the door, there's storage. We put our wet swim uh, suits here usually. Um, and actually, at the vent, uh, the vents at the bottom. There are vents at the bottom, all over the RV, like that one, that are actually for the furnace. They are all over the bottom, so the heat actually rises, and then the air conditioning are at the top. Cold air goes down, so. It's actually pretty neat how they did that. When you run the generator or are connected to the power at your campsite, all you will have is your microwave, your um, air conditioning or the furnace, and the electrical outlets. Actually, when we did use the furnace, I believe we did not have any power running other than battery power because it's just gas and maybe just a fan. There are multiple outlets uh, around the RV. There's one here, there's even one on the side of the bed here. One over here, there's one, well, on both sides of the bed, there's one by the other side of the bed. There's kitchen, there's one there. So you will not run out of electrical outlet. You can only use three outlets when you're running the generator just because you will overload the system probably. The kitchen is fully stocked. It has pots and pans for cooking. It has cups, plates, cutlery. Um, everything except for the lighter so that was the one negative thing you you would have to either bring your own lighter or buy one at the grocery store whenever you go quickly uh, or you're on your first day basically if you live in Canada and you're coming to rent one of these make sure you bring everything you could think of for camping because you're basically going camping we even brought an axe if you're coming from abroad and you're renting one of these RVs like if you're from Europe or anywhere else basically um, you're flying in you will have to buy quite a lot of things at the grocery store I think like we bought plates paper plates subs to uh, cutlery it does include it all but if you want to save water and you don't want to do so many dishes um, I would recommend buying some of that uh, of course we bought the, the lighter I brought an axe because we wanted to chop some wood and I don't think you can bring an axe on an airplane. So they do sometimes sell their starter packages at the campsites. So we just chopped our own, the big pieces of wood and small pieces so we could actually have a campfire. The RV has a ton of storage. We did not lack anywhere to put anything. This is the hatch for the propane. Right here. Every time you get fuel, you have to turn this off because of course there is a pilot light and fire at a gas station is not a good idea. So whenever you're at a gas station, just turn it all the way down. And then you fill up. It is recommended to also turn the power off, but we did skip it every now and then because it doesn't actually say it on the warning sticker by the fuel tank. This is the one that you do want to turn off when you get gas. This is also here for fill-ups. Most campsites will have a fill-up or some gas stations will have a fill-up. There's a dial right here. It shows if your gas, if your propane is full or empty. They come filled up and it will last about a week even if you're using your furnace. We only filled it up two times so, uh, in the four weeks. So it's been pretty good and it's cheap. It's only about a dollar per liter and both times we filled it up when it was halfway, it cost us less than $15 Canadian. So it's it's pretty pretty cheap overall. So there's a lot of storage compartments here. They're all different sizes. They're all pretty much the same depth, except for the big one here at the back. So we did have a big umbrella and camping chair, then the stroller and everything. We just put it in here. It goes all the way through to the other side. RVs do seem to have a bit more storage actually than caravans or what do you want to call them, trailers, trailer home. When you're at a campsite, this is actually where you can hook up your uh, instant water, city water connection or your campsite connection. It would be right here. When you're filling up your water, you can just fill it up here 
at the dumping site and you just fill up clean fresh water here for showering watch out because some are okay for drinking others are not so what we did was we just bought bottled water it's very cheap if you go to a grocery store and just buy crates of water there's so much storage space here that we just drank bottled water and that's about it this is a Ford E450 Super Duty. It's a V10 engine and it has actually quite a lot of power. No problems going up and down the mountains, except for a couple times it was a very steep, long mountain and we did slow down to maybe 60 or 50 just for safety because we did not want the car to overheat. Cruise control did deactivate even when we were going up a big hill between Kamloops and Chilliwack. There was a few big long hills that just, or mountains basically, where cruise control deactivated because it was just too steep and it was revving way too high. But other than that, like it's been very good. You see the big transport trucks slowing down to like 20 or 30 kilometers an hour sometimes. It's pretty slow so but we had no problems with this thing as you can see we hit a few bugs so we cleaned the a few <laughs> <laughs> and it's rained several times and it's still covered we cleaned the windshield several times basically every time we got gas we basically got gas every day I tried not letting it go below half the tank because sometimes you would not see a gas station in a long time or we would drive in the evening and a lot of gas stations shut down. But when I'm cleaning the windshield, I also clean the headlights because if those were covered in bug splats, it would probably reduce the lights. They're actually not that great. I mean, overall they have been okay, but the high beams uh, seem to not be that great because they spread out too much. But they, however, don't even recommend you to drive at night anyway because wildlife comes out and a couple nights we were driving in the evening or even at night we saw mountain goats, we saw deer, we seen... what else did we see? Bears and elks were during the day but we saw lots of deer sometimes just on the side of the road so and what the mountain goats were on the middle of the road they wouldn't even move so we had to slow down and kind of go around them but they were like whatever I don't care you're coming and you don't want to hit a mountain goat on the road.